Chapter 50. A Citizen of Nasolar. On the second night, I felt exhausted. I began to grasp the value of spiritual nourishment through mutual love and understanding. Back in Nasolar, I had spent many days on active duty without ordinary food while training in the elevated work to which many of us dedicated ourselves. The presence of my dear friends, their displays of affection, the absorption of pure elements from the air and water had been enough. But here I found nothing but a dark battlefield where my loved ones had become enemies. The precious reflections that Clarencio's words had inspired in me brought a certain peace to my heart. At last I understood human needs. I was not Zelia's owner, but her brother and friend. Likewise, my children were not my property, but instead my companions in struggle and achievement. I remembered that Laura had once affirmed that every creature in active service should proceed like a bee buzzing about the flowers of life, which represent noble souls in the field of memories, extracting from each one the substance of valuable examples in order to acquire the honey of wisdom. I applied her precious advice to my own case and began to remember my mother. Hadn't she sacrificed herself for my father to the point of adopting those unhappy women as her beloved daughters? Also, Lara was replete with such edifying examples. Minister Veneranda had been working for centuries for the spirit group most closely connected to her heart. Narcissa sacrificed herself in the chambers to obtain a spiritual endorsement to return to the world on a mission of assistance. Hilda had defeated the dragon of the lower emotion of jealousy. And what about the expression of fraternity by my other friends in the colony? Florencio had welcomed me with devotion of a father. Lysias's mother had received me as a son, and Tobias as his brother. Each companion in my new struggle offered me something useful for building the different mental attitude that had begun to rise quickly within my spirit. I tried to distance myself from the obviously ungrateful dynamics occurring in that domestic environment. I decided to put divine love above everything else and to place the just needs of my fellow creatures ahead of my own personal sentiments. Still very tired, I went into the room of the sick man, whose condition was worsening by the minute. Zelia was caressing his face, and, bathed in tears, said, Ernesto, Ernesto, have pity on me, my dear. Don't leave me alone. What will become of me if you die? The sick man caressed her hands and responded with immense affection, despite his labored breathing. I prayed to the Lord for the strength I needed to maintain the right understanding. So I started regarding this couple as my brother and sister. I realized that Zelia and Ernesto loved each other immensely, and if I actually felt like the fraternal companion of both, I should help them with all the resources within reach. I began my work by trying to enlighten the unhappy spirits who were keeping a tight rein on the patient. However, the difficulty in doing so was enormous. I felt completely debilitated. During this emergency, I remembered one of Tobias's lessons when he had told me, Here in Nasalar, not all of us need an Airbus for transportation, because the more elevated inhabitants of the colony have the power of volition at their disposal. Nor do all of us need communication equipment to converse over long distances, because we mutually maintain ourselves on a plane of perfect thought attunement. Those who are attuned in this way may use the process of mental conversation at will, regardless of the distance. I thought about how useful Narcissa's help would be, so I experimented. I concentrated in a fervent prayer to the Father, and in the vibrations of the prayer, I addressed Narcissa, asking for her help. I mentally told her of my painful experience informed her of my intention of helping the couple, and insisted that she not forsake me. Then the unexpected happened. After twenty minutes, more or less, when I was still asking for my friend's help, someone lightly touched my shoulder. It was Narcissa, who had come to help. With a smile, she said, I heard your appeal, my friend, and I have come. 
I couldn't contain my happiness. The messenger of the good observed the situation, understood the gravity of the moment, and added, We have no time to lose. First, she applied comforting passes to the patient, freeing him from the dark spirits who fled as if by magic. Then she invited me firmly, Let's go outside into nature. I followed her without hesitation, and noticing my inquiring look, she remarked, Human beings are not the only ones who can receive and emit fluids. The same occurs in the forces of nature, in the various kingdoms in which it is divided. In the case of our patient, we need trees. They will help us effectively. Surprised by this new lesson, I silently followed her. After we arrived at a place where there were several enormous trees, Narcissa called someone with expressions I couldn't understand. Within moments, eight spirit entities answered her call. Greatly surprised, I saw Narcissa ask them if there were any mango and eucalyptus trees in the neighborhood. After being informed by her friends, who were completely unknown to me, the nurse explained, These friends are day-to-day -day workers of the plant kingdom. And noticing my surprise, she continued, As you can see, there is nothing useless in our father's house. Wherever there are those who need to learn, there are those willing to teach. And whenever a difficulty arises, providence shows up. The only unfortunate being in the divine work is the improvident spirit who has condemned itself to the darkness of evil. Within a few moments, Narcissa had blended a certain substance using the emanations of the eucalyptus and mango trees, and throughout the night we applied the medicine to the patient through his ordinary breathing and by absorption through his pores. The ailing man experienced remarkable improvement. Early in the morning, his doctor remarked extremely surprised. It appears that something extraordinary happened last night, a real miracle of nature. Zelia was radiant. The house was full of renewed joy. As for myself, I felt great jubilation in my soul. Profound relief and beautiful hopes reinvigorated my being. I realized that the powerful ties of the lower emotions had been broken within me forever. That day, I returned to Nasalar in the company of Narcissa. I experienced the power of volition for the first time. In a moment, we had covered a great distance. The banner of joy had unfurled in my soul. I told the kindly nurse about the lightness I was feeling, and she explained, In Nasalar, a great number of spirits could do without the Airbus and transport themselves at will within the areas of our vibratory range. But since most have not yet acquired that faculty, we all abstain from using it in the public streets. This abstention, however, doesn't keep us from using the procedure outside the city when it is necessary to cover long distances and to save time. New understanding and new joy enriched my spirit. Instructed by Narcissa, I went to and fro between my earth home and the spirit city without any great difficulty. Thus, I could intensify Ernesto's treatment. His improvement was firm, obvious, and rapid. Clarencio visited me daily, showing satisfaction with my work. At the end of the week, my first leave of absence from the chambers of rectification was over. Happiness had returned to the couple, whom I started to love as my brother and sister. It was time to return to my duties. In the dim and comforting light of the evening, I had taken the road back to Nasalar totally changed. During those seven quick days... I had learned precious practical lessons in the living cult of understanding and fraternity. The sublime evening filled me with magnificent thoughts. How great divine providence is, I said to myself. With what wisdom the Lord arranges all the works and situations of life. With what love he watches over all creations. Something interrupted my meditation. Over two hundred of my friends had come to meet me. They all greeted me generously. Lysias, Licinia, Narcissa, Silviera, Tobias, Salsustio, and many other workers from the chambers were there. I didn't know what to do. I was taken by surprise. It was then that Minister Clarencio came forward, held out his right hand, and spoke. 
Until today, André, you have been my pupil in the colony. But from now on, in the name of the government center, I declare you a citizen of Nasolar. Why such magnanimity when my triumph was so small? I couldn't hold back the tears of emotion that choked my voice. And bearing in mind the greatness of the divine goodness, I threw myself into Clarencio's fatherly arms, weeping with gratitude and joy.